ஆரம்பிச்சு <coughs> 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 கீழ இருக்கும் போல ஒரு ஆப்ஷன் உண்டு
Hello, can I kick that? Can
Hello. Hello, Kanna, can you hear me? Hello. 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 மொபைல் <laughs> கேக்குதாட்டி <laughs> 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 இல்ல நான் அதை ஆக்டிவேட் பண்றேன் அது வரமாட்டேங்கி ஆடியோ இப்போ கிளீனா இருக்கு வீடியோ உங்க வீட்டு ஸ்கிரீன்லாம் தெரியுது அது அந்த கம்ப்யூட்டர்ல அது இருக்குது ஆ ஆ இப்போ என்னோட अदर வீடியோ வருதா சரி நான் இது ஆடியோ யூஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறேன் இல்ல இல்ல மொபைல்ல எனக்கு வீடியோ வரல அதான் கேட்டேன் ஸ்டார்ட் வீடியோஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் வீடியோ போட்டா ஆக்டிவேட் ஆகல ஆ ஹலோ ஓகே நான் அப்ப இதுல இருந்து பேசிடுறேன் start. வெல்கம் Uh, and especially I invite the talk that Kanna uh, is an amazing uh, personality talking about and I'm really happy to have you all in this webinar. I thank the Lord Almighty for this webinar. I welcome on to the front again. May I request Dr. Dinahar to introduce the uh, uh, guest. Thank you. Dinner, you introduced that. Dinner, can you hear me? Dinner, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You introduced that, yes. Uh, now dr denagar of our department will introduce you. denagar voice mute clerk unmute 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 yourself unmute Uh, 
He completed his PhD and PhD degree in Bardia University in the field of environmental radiation physics. He has published 24 papers in a reputed international journal. He is a leading PhD scholar and working in current energy for the past 12 years. From his childhood, he had a great interest and love towards astronomy and he used to read a lot about it. So I think he is the right person to speak about today's topic, his marvelous and his book of the universe. Thank you. Now, Dr. Jama, please take over. Is your voice is not quite audible? My voice is audible? <clears throat> okay, shall I start? I can start the message. Dinagar, I am not able to hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Uh, you can start. Handing over okay. the net tool. Chill. So, good morning to all the participants. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great joy for me to be here. I hope you are able to hear me perfectly well. So today we are going to see about the marvels and mysteries of the universe. Uh, your audio. So we are having a lot of schedule for today. Like, what are the basic definitions of astronomy, astrophysics, cosmology? We'll be going through the giant scale structure of the universe quite very quickly. Then we'll be seeing about our place in the universe. Few things we'll see about Earth, asteroids, our planet, sun, alien life, stars, supernova. Many students and many faculty, they asked questions about black holes. So we'll be seeing something about black holes in details. Then we'll be seeing about our own Milky Way galaxy, galaxies in our neighborhood. Then how we are seeing all these things? What are the tools we are using for seeing the universe? Then we have some couple of very interesting questions like time travel, is it possible? What are the spaceship designs they are coming up with? How the universe began? <clears throat> what is the concept of parallel universe, dark matter and dark energy? Then we'll be concluding our talk. I expect you to wear your seat belts. We are going across a voyage in space I hope you like the voyage. So, day before yesterday, we have circulated a form, Google form, to ask questions to the speaker. About 100 participants had eagerly asked questions. The first question I would like to answer is, what is astronomy? Astronomy is a scientific study of celestial objects like stars, planets, comets, galaxies. So this, are, this is a scientific study of all these celestial objects. Then what is astrophysics? Astrophysics is a branch of space science that applies the laws of physics and chemistry to explain the birth, life, and death of stars, planets, galaxies, and so on. Now what is cosmology? Cosmology is a branch of physics. It's a branch of astronomy. It, can, it is concerned with the origin and evolution of the universe. So it is mainly concerned with the Big Bang theory, how all these galaxies evolved and what is happening today and into the future, how it is going to be, that is cosmology. So I hope you have obtained a clear idea about what is astronomy, astrophysics and cosmology. Few people have asked question about astrology. Now that is quite very interesting. We'll be seeing about that if time permits at the end of the lecture. What is the giant scale structure of the universe? The giant scale structure of the universe is quite awesome. You are able to see the now Earth in true color. It is not a single photograph. It is a digital montage of more than 3,000 photographs. This is how the Earth will look like during daytime. And this is how Earth will look like during nighttime. And you can see where we have vegetation, where we have deserts, and where we have civilization during the night time very clearly. And you are now seeing
Okay, am I audible, Jonathan? Am I audible? Jonathan, can you hear me? I'm saying so. So, the voice is clear. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. The host uh, muted all, including the speaker. That is quite really uh, strange. Okay, now, uh, the green planet is our own planet here. And you can see our planet here, the cosmic surrounding. If you are very carefully seeing, you may be able to see even Pope's College also. If you have very good eyesight, you may be also able to see Tarunia also. This is how Earth looked like when the astronauts went from the other side of the moon. And when they emerged from the other side of the moon, this is the picture of Earth, what they got. We have so much of planets in our own solar system, like Mercury. You are able to see Mercury crossing the surface of the sun. Then you are having the planet Venus. You are having the green planet again coming into picture, the red planet, Mars. Mars is having dust storms. Now and then you may have seen that uh, picture in the movie Martian. This is gas giant, Jupiter. Jupiter is so very big. So what is the size of the Jupiter? The size of the Jupiter is so very big that there is a red spot, red spot on Jupiter, which is enough to engulf planet Earth. Then you have the ringed planet Saturn. There are a few questions about uh, gas giant Jupiter and ringed planet Saturn. So this is the ring. It, you can see some of the moons of the Saturn moving across the rings of the Saturn. Then you have the tilted planet Uranus. You have blue planet Neptune. Then you have the first pictures of Pluto and Charon. This is how Pluto looked like some 25 years back. But nowadays, we know that there was a spacecraft known by the name New Horizons, which has taken the image of Pluto in all its majesty, flying just 12,000 kilometers above the surface of Pluto. And this is a very close up image of the surface of Pluto. Pluto has thrown out many interesting challenges to planetary geologists seems to be very active, situated so far away from the sun. It is geologically active, and that is quite very surprising. Now we are going to see a few interesting slides. How can we compare the size of planet Earth with that of moon and Pluto? As you can see, planet Earth is really very, very big. And it is bigger than, of course, our moon. Pluto is smaller than our moon. That is why they have demoted Pluto from planets, and they have placed it in minor planets list. Of all the rocky planets, Earth is slightly larger than Venus, twice as large than Mars. When we compare the size of Earth with that of Jupiter, now we are in for a surprise. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. It's really very big. And when we si compare the size of all the planets with that of Sun, Sun is our star. We know that it is a ball of fire in the center of our solar system. A small spot on the Sun is enough to engulf planet Earth. Now you can see the size comparison of sun with that of planets. Can you see planet Earth here? It is so very small. As you may be aware, sun is not the biggest star in the night sky. It is an average size star. When you compare the size of sun with big stars, you can see sun is a very, very small thing. Earth is invisible at this scale. And when you compare the size of other stars with that of sun, sun is not at all visible. It is just one pixel here in this picture. So we have quite very interesting things in the night sky. You can see waxing and waning of our moon. Our solar system is having so much of moons. The biggest moon being Ganymede of Jupiter, followed by Titan of Saturn, Callisto, Io, Europa, and moon. We are having so much of moons. Then meteor is a phenomenon what we have in our solar system. It is tiny pieces of rocks that enter Earth's atmosphere and they get completely banter. And people, some people believe that when you see shooting star, it is a good luck phenomenon. When these meteors come and crash down on the surface of planet, it is meteorite. It is a lump of rock or a metal from space that crashes on the surface of planet Earth. If these rocks travel in interplanetary space, they are known as meteorites. And you may know about asteroids. 
between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter, you have thousands and thousands of rocky bodies, and they are million, practically millions of these asteroids. And the biggest asteroid being Ceres, it is thousand kilometer in diameter. They have taken samples from asteroid, like asteroid Itokawa, a spacecraft named Hayabusa launched by Japan. They have taken samples from asteroids. There are thousands of asteroids like this. And even asteroids have moon system, asteroid moon system, a bigger asteroid being uh, revolved around by a smaller moon system. Then you have comets, the icy bodies, which is coming from the far reaches of the solar system. The short period comets come from hyperbolt and the long period com comets come from Oort cloud. And this is Halley's Comet, taken on March 14, 1986. And the photograph was taken by Gato Space Probe, launched by Italy through European Space Agency. And the next appearance of Halley's Comet will be in the year 2062. I hope most of you will be alive during that time, some 42 years from now. So if you are lucky, we'll be able to see Halley's Comet coming into planet Earth's uh, orbit once again. You are seeing comets, Swassman, Washman. There are thousands and thousands of comets. Recently, they landed on a comet and it is named Churimo Garasimenko. And it is a very, very close up image of the comet Churimo Garasimenko. And uh, they have taken an image of a Kuiper Belt object quite recently by New Horizons Space Probe. So much of things are there to explore, so much of things to do, but we have limited resources and we are doing our best to do all these things. And these are the constituents of our solar system. Till now, we were traveling really very slow. Now we are going to travel very fast. And with this, we have come to the end of solar system. A star is a self-luminous ball of gas. We all know that they emit light on their own. We have double star system like Albiro double star system. You have triple star system like what you are seeing in this picture, a neutron star and a two white dwarfs having a common center of gravity. So you are seeing a giant planet around a triple star system. Having one star itself, it's a very big challenge like our sun. If you are having triple star system like this, then we are in for a very, very hot climate. And you have quadruple star system, four star system, and so on. There are many, many star systems like this. So you have, in general, two bigger classifications of star systems, galactic star system or globular star system. So galactic cluster or open cluster are star systems which are having hundreds of stars having common center of gravity. They may be together for a long, long time. They may drift also. So they are not very compact in uh, practically speaking. Then you have Omega Centauri, global star system, millions and millions of stars in a single star system. And that is really very really quite amazing. And you are now seeing inside Omega Centauri, thousands and thousands of stars having common center of gravity. These kind of star systems, global star systems are found near the center of galaxies. Open star system like global star system, like Pleiades star system, they are found in the peripheral edges of the galaxy. Then you have something called as nebula, a region of gas and dust in galaxy. Usually they are fuzzy in appearance. You are seeing a very, very famous uh, nebula, Hosshead nebula. A galaxy is one which contains all these things, star systems, solar systems, then you have nebulae, you have various kind of different, different parts of a galaxy. It is a system of billions of stars bound together by their own gravity. We know our own galaxies, Milky Way galaxy. There was an interesting question from one of the participants. Do we have some other galaxies? We really do have billions and billions of them. But you are right. Some 100 years before, in 1920, there was a debate whether there are other galaxies like our own Milky Way galaxy or we have only nebulae. Even they were considering Andromeda galaxy as a nebula, Andromeda nebula. Some 120 years before, if you were in an astronomy class, they might have told you we have only one galaxy, that is Milky Way galaxy, and all other things are nebula. But we have now discovered thousands and thousands of galaxies. You are seeing a similar galaxy to Milky Way galaxy, Whirlpool galaxy. You are seeing Pinwheel galaxy. And these galaxies form groups. 
and this is known as fixed and compact group and groups of groups of galaxies are known as super clusters of galaxies you have thousands of groups of galaxies steep and splintered safer sextet and all these groups of galaxies form super clusters of galaxies you are able to see hercules super cluster you are able to see abul ultra deep field you have you are seeing now galaxy cluster able and this is an amazing image whatever points you you see in this image except that cross symbol or spike symbol which is star inside our own milky way galaxy each and every dot is a galaxy you are seeing literally thousands and thousands of galaxies this is hubble ultra deep field so the universe is one which contains all these super clusters of galaxies and that's not the end of the matter what else is there do we have parallel universe do we have multiverse scientists are speculating this concept it is not a proven one we have to mind that it is an speculation by many scientists like even stephen hawking the great astrophysicist so we are thinking of multiverse we are thinking of parallel universes we are thinking of black holes as connecting um, between one universe to another universe all these things are quite nice to talk about but in reality they may not be true also so this is local supercluster of galaxies can you see a blue line the local group i hope you are able to see in the middle of the picture there is something called as local group we are blinging to that kind of space we are there and this is local galactic group here you can clearly see our own galaxy milky way galaxy you are able to see a bigger galaxy in our local galactic group andromeda galaxy and the distance between milky way galaxy and andromeda galaxy is roughly 2.2 million light years and we have so many so many dwarf galaxies surrounding our own milky way galaxy we have so many dwarf galaxies surrounding andromeda galaxy the two prominent members of our own local galactic group is milky way galaxy and andromeda galaxy and this is our own galaxy and you are seeing sun which is nearly two thirds distance from the center of the milky way galaxy and this is our local neighborhood sun is very very close to proxima centauri we know the distance it is 4.2 light years away sun is relatively living in a um, empty space and that is really very good for us otherwise we will be having so many suns which will be very difficult to handle and this is our solar system and we know that we are very very near to our sun this is our immediate neighborhood there were some quite interesting questions on earth some participants they have asked some interesting questions about planet earth they were asking is there any zero gravity place on earth actually there is no such thing as zero gravity you may feel weightlessness when you are moving around planet earth with a certain velocity but zero gravity is a different thing we can never say there is some place in the universe where we have zero gravity the earth's gravity as we know keeps the moon in orbit we have to keep in mind gravity never disappears entirely it just gets weaker at some point even acceleration due to gravity is very strong near oh, uh, our equator region uh, sorry as it is in polar region it is stronger and as we move towards equator region it is having some approximate value as 9.8 meter per second square why do seasons occur one uh, student asked no it is because of the tilt of earth its axis in its orbit so earth is tilted 23.5 degree in its orbit so we are having seasons what will happen if a rock falls on planet earth you will have a crater like this it is a mile long it is nearly 200 meter deep so it is because of a meteor crash on arizona in usa if it is a really bigger meteor or if it is an asteroid which is bigger in size then we will have catastrophic events on planet earth there will be huge tsunamis there will be massive earthquakes even it may trigger volcanic eruptions and there will be total destruction and chaos and what will happen if a comet crashes onto planet earth there also we have a quite difficult scenario you may remember some 
20 years before comet shoemaker levy nearly 25 years before it crashed into jupiter if the same comet had crashed into planet earth we will not be living here and speaking with each other so comet is a bigger thing and if it crashes on planet earth then life will become difficult for many of us already we are suffering from corona virus we do not need any other tragedy to affect us there was a question like this how solar systems are getting formed solar systems as per current understanding they are formed from a cloud of gas and dust these cloud of gas and dust they rotate and as they rotate they get collected in a particular point in the center of that cloud and that becomes a star the remaining things get accredited they get uh, collected in particular format and they become planets this is the current understanding of science and as per the current theory the sun the solar system it had a chaotic birth scenario the planets are in a fixed position as of now they may not have been in those kind of positions some billions of years back that is according to the current scientific theory are we alone in the universe are we really alone in the universe this is a nice question which was asked by many of the participants do we have aliens in our neighborhood so are we alone in the universe what are the three important things about the evolution of life as per science can you guess it so i hope you are able to see this slide quite clearly are we alone in the universe <clears throat> this is a question can life originate on another world if the conditions are suitable according to uri miller theory we are going to see that answer will life always evolve towards intelligence this is another question as per the scientific understanding we are having intelligence of course that is why we are talking with each other we are having computers and all these things zoom meeting and everything we life have intelligence if it is evolving in some other part of the universe and there will be another question will they have super intelligence will they have more knowledge than what we are having how common are suitable conditions for the beginning of life now according to uri miller experiment they were successful in creating some amino acids but those kind of amino acids were not found in life on planet earth and those kind of amino acids were not also stable so that is a bigger discussion we may not go into that kind of discussion now but they were successful in forming some kind of amino acids will life always evolve towards intelligence now here comes again darwin's theory if intelligence favors one species over another the answer is a probable yes only we have to really investigate the conditions on other planets and statistics of stars in our milky way galaxy then only we can come to a conclusion how common are suitable conditions for the beginning of life what are the requirements for life what are the requirements of life as we know it here you have to understand an important thing as we know it of course if we have evolved by chance if it is all a probable thing life can have infinite number of forms infinite number of probabilities it need not have two legs two eyes uh, two feet like what we have it can have any different forms so the common requirements of life as we know it is liquid water and atmosphere moderate temperatures like what we have and time billions and billions of years of time to evolve from simple organic compounds into higher life forms so life in our solar system we know as of now only on planet earth we have life do we have life on any other part of our solar system there are few questions in that regard as of now to the best of understanding do we have life on any other part of our solar system so i will give you a few seconds to ponder over that question you may think of few places on planet earth
do we have life on any other part of our solar system as of now no but the most promising candidate is mars and some years before some decades before a meteorite from mars crashed on planet earth they told it had some fundamental life forms but it is not a confirmed result so we have to neglect that result many moons of jupiter moons of saturn they may have life as per the current understanding what about other planetary system planetary systems are common kepler space probe has uh, taken the image of many planetary system so there may be a possibility of other planetary systems having life so we should not be in a place where it is too hot we should not be in a place where it is too cold so we should be in a particular zone around the star which is known as goldilocks zone or a zone where life is possible as we know it so far we have spent many millions of dollars in searching for life extraterrestrial life so it is known as seti the search for extraterrestrial life and we have done our level best to detect life or signal from some other alien civilization so far we have not been successful and we have to reduce all kind of background noise from the universe it's a challenging task then they had billion channel extraterrestrial assay now we have so many programs running for detecting life in outer space and you may be aware of drake equation the drake equation tells us the life is possible at least in one civilization within a few dozens of light years distance so there may be life possible according to this break equation within few dozen light years but still now we have not received any signal from any other civilization our civil, our signals we what we are sending into space it seems that it, nobody is receiving them so we have to really wait and watch kepler space probe has unfact for us many solar systems like what you are seeing on the screen Kepler 62 is a planetary system you can see in the habitable zone there is no planet they are very very close to their parent star and you can see Kepler 186 planetary system maybe only one planet which is very similar to planet here is in habitable zone and Kepler 22 almost all the planets are in habitable zone that is very quite very interesting and you have kepler 452 and most of those planets are in habitable zone do they have contain life we really do not know we have to wait and watch now imagine if there are alien life forms out there what will be their shape will they have six legs will they have two legs of course it is imagination by our own artist since we are having two legs and two hands they are not able to go beyond this basic structure but if uh, you may be some of you may be offended by seeing that next slide if we are having and real miss universe context a real miss universe context where we are having aliens also participating the judges may be saying something like this those ugly as girls don't stand a chance of winning and you can see all other life forms that is quite very strange you can have any kind of imagination but you may have a beautiful life like this in some other alien world see through structure of course this uh, living species is in planet earth it is not in any other alien world sometimes you may find a very dull looking drab looking life species like this also it's not quite very uh, nice to look at this creature but anyhow it may not be uh completely not useful they are having their own usefulness so we have to see that so now we are coming to stars stars as we know they are self luminous ball of gas and you can see this is the main sequence star in the middle of the screen and sun is an yellow star it is not a green star and orange star as somebody had asked questions it is a main sequence star 
now you can see super giants and red giant star white dwarf stars and you are seeing the hottest you are seeing the luminous the brightest and you are seeing some kind of stars like this there are many types of stars especially we are classifying them into seven groups you can see their surface temperature our star is g2 it is having a surface temperature of 5000 to 6000 kelvin some questions were asked about sun why the corona of the sun is much much hotter than the surface of the sun scientists are still trying to unravel that mystery so it is still remaining a mystery if you are really interested you are also welcome to be a part of that kind of research many many faculty many many student had asked about black hole of course it is really very wonderful to know black hole always speaks to our imagination it is an awesome thing to our imagination so let me try to be very brief here to explain about the life cycle of stars stars can have two life cycle one an ordinary life cycle our own sun or another thing is called as an extraordinary life cycle like the formation of a black hole star forming nebulae if they are forming a sun like star an average sized star then it will form a red giant at the end of the lifetime and then it will become a planetary nebula after the planetary nebula stage it will become a white dwarf and then after the white dwarf it will become a black dwarf that's the end of the star but if the star is a massive star nearly 8 to 10 times the mass of our sun what will happen that star will become a red super giant and after which after the nuclear reaction stops at the core it will explode in a fantastic thing called supernova and if the mass of the remaining thing is more than a particular limit it will become a black hole otherwise it will become a neutron star so that is how it will be there right so this is the life cycle of a star in a very brief terminology they begin their lives as clouds of dust and gas as per the current understanding of science gravity causes the nebula to contract they become a protostar after they become a protostar they take two different steps either they become main sequence star like our sun and the life span of the star depends on its size if it is very large if it is very massive they burn their fuel very quicker and they live only for few hundreds of thousands of years smaller stars will live for billions of years as per the current understanding of science the sun has lived nearly for 5 billion years and it will live more for another 5 billion years eventually when the nuclear fuel of the star begins to run out then something will happen like in the case of our sun it will become a red giant and then the star will collapse and then it will become a planetary nebula it will shed off the outer layer will become planetary nebula it will become a white dwarf then it will become a black dwarf if the star is very massive as we have seen it will become a red super giant star and again once the nuclear fuel runs out the star will collapse and it will explode in a very violent manner known as supernova we have also hypernovae very very violent supernova and if the mass is below a particular limit it will become a neutron star if it is above a particular limit they will become a black hole so that is how black holes are formed so many questions were asked how black holes are formed so again you can see an average star will become a white dwarf a massive star will end up as a black hole so these are all artistic rendition of a black hole so black holes can be of many types primordial black holes which is formed during the initial uh, big bang a uh, submassive black hole which is having less mass than even our sun stellar black holes so mass is slightly greater than our sun intermediate mass black holes mass greater than hundreds of times than our mass of sun supermassive black holes mass having billions of times millions of times mass as a data of our sun what will happen to a object which will fall into a black hole due to the immense gravity it will be crushed into many places pieces 
it will be crushed in horizontal di direction it will be crushed in vertical direction it will elongate like a noodle and that is called spaghettification and then it will be gone why it is not visible because even light cannot escape from the immense gravitational field of black hole what is inside a black hole nobody knows so i am giving you some size comparison the size of an atom is 10 power minus 10 meter the size of a nucleus is 10 power minus 15 meter the size of a protein is approximately 10 power minus 16 meter the size of an electron is 10 power minus 18 meter what is the size of a black hole now when you consider the atomic density of uranium it is around 7000 kg per meter cube but when you consider the nuclear density of uranium atom it is an astounding amount 5.92 10 power 16 kg per meter cube you can clearly understand atom is having so much of empty space if the entire space of an atom is filled with matter then you cannot lift even a small single atom so most of the atoms is an empty space you can understand clearly from this slide what is the density of a black hole what is inside a black hole nobody knows for example a star which was 5.4 times greater than the mass of sun was reduced to a radius of 16 kilometer but wait 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 16 kilometer the size of the black hole is 16 kilometer the radius the Schwarzschild radius the radius up to which the uh, the gravity of the black hole is so strong is 16 kilometer we have to understand that but black holes are singularity point as predicted by general theory of relativity propounded by albert einstein what is the size of a singularity it is less than 10 power minus 40 meter less than 10 power minus 40 meter it is so very small so very small even than the size of an electron then what will be the density of this kind of black hole intermediate massive black hole the density will be anywhere between 2.56 into 10 power 150 kilogram per meter cube it is an infinite density it will be so dense and super hot so what will be the state of the matter our sun it is having an core temperature of 10 power 8 kelvin as solar plasma normal plasma what do you say if the temperature is raised by 100 times you have hadron plasma like what you find in neutron star and if the temperature is still raised by 10 uh, 100 times you have quark gluon plasma inside a black hole what is the temperature it will be so so heavy so so big so you cannot really imagine what will be inside a black hole nobody knows but we can theorize but nobody really knows so galaxy m87 picture you are now able to see in this screen we have a supermassive black hole in galaxy m87 the black hole is having an effective range of influence like 40 billion kilometers so that is a short sale radius or up to that radius the effect of the black hole is completely seen the black hole is 500 million trillion kilometer away and recently the even horizon telescope was able to capture the image and this is the image of that black hole the black hole was 6.5 billion times more massive than that of sun what will be the density then it will be greater than 10 power 160 and it is one of the heaviest black holes scientists have ever found it is an absolute monster so what is really inside a black hole nobody knows it is really really very tough to understand we are not even able to find the internal structure of electron which is having a size of 10 power minus 18 meter when the black hole is told to have a singularity less than the size of 10 power minus 40 meter only we can theorize we cannot really find it out and black holes are known to emit jets of matter into space super luminal jets jets which are traveling near the speed of light and that is coming from center of most of the galaxies and you can see in this picture black hole jets as it is coming from the center of many galaxies and you can see these are all not just optical images only 
these are all x-ray images optical images radio images everything put together then only you can really study about black hole jet so what is the history of milky way galaxy now we are moving from black holes to galaxies many questions were asked about galaxies how galaxies are getting formed i have already told you how solar systems were getting formed from a cloud of gas and dust galaxies are also thought to form from a massive cloud of gas and dust they begin to rotate the center part begins to rotate more and more so the first generation star form near the center of the galaxy and they are metal poor stars and they are the first generation stars and stars and clusters are left behind in the halo and the gas cloud flattens new generations of stars will have a flatter distribution they will be formed around the spiral uh, arms of galaxies and then you have finally the galaxy getting formed the disk of the galaxy is now very thin there will be a central bulge near the center of the galaxies and you will be able to see these kind of images in the images of many galaxies many spiral galaxies so this is milky way galaxy we have not taken the image of milky way galaxy this is an artistic rendition we really do not have a real picture of milky way galaxy but based on observations this is the best knowledge of milky way galaxy what we are having now and this is the place position of sun as we have already seen and this is the nuclear bulk in the center of the milky way galaxy so that is the disk and the nuclear bulk you are able to see and it is a broad central broad spiral galaxy the halo also you are able to see now and you can see the places are go globular cluster galaxies are much much diverse in their shapes and this is hubble deep field you are able to see a large variety of galaxies here spiral galaxies you are able to see elliptical galaxies you are able to see irregular galaxies there are so many different types of galaxies right so based on how elliptical they are the galaxies are uh, classified as e0 to e7 e0 means they are perfectly spherical e7 means they are highly elliptical right and then you have spiral galaxies tightly bound spiral galaxies and loosely bound spiral galaxies then you have barred spiral galaxies they will have tightly bound loosely bound barred spiral galaxy then you have irregular galaxies you can see spiral galaxies are rich in gas and dust they are having active star formation region as the current understanding of science then you have barred spiral galaxies these are all different types of galaxies few questions were asked on rotation of galaxies how can you say galaxies are rotating we study the spectrum if the spectrum is going towards the blue shift then we can say that these galaxies are moving towards here and if the shift is towards red side of the spectrum those galaxies are moving away from the earth and by studying the different points in these galaxies we can say that they are rotating right it is based on the spectral study of the galaxies okay so we are having electromagnetic spectrum we know the constituents of electromagnetic spectrum starting from radio waves microwaves and then infrared visible ultraviolet x ray and gamma ray we have so much of things in electromagnetic spectrum you can see clearly here radio waves are reaching the surface of the planet without much difficulty visual window is also clearly reaching down the surface but you are not able to see either infrared or ultraviolet or x rays even some of the gamma rays are not reaching down up to the planet earth surface and that is why for some of the astronomical observations we are going to space right we as physics students know about wavelength frequency because of the difficulty in observing some part of the electromagnetic spectrum from the surface of the planet earth we need satellites to observe now we have moved to telescopes right we need high flying airplanes or satellites to observe infrared spectrum we have optical telescopes 
optical telescopes are part of human being some 400 years before when hans lippershey and galileo they invented telescopes independently right and the larger the telescope the more light it gathers now we have so many telescopes coming online many students have asked how can i start a research career in astronomy i will be answering that question at the end of the lecture but you have to be aware of all the international projects which are coming online not only in optical telescope in optical telescope it's got three big international projects are coming online european extremely large telescope large magellan telescope and the tachymeter telescope tachymeter telescope tmt large magellan telescope elm large magellan telescope and then extremely large telescope european extremely large telescope so the bigger the telescope the more light it will gather right we are keeping telescopes on mountain tops so as to avoid atmospheric turbulence and light pollution because of the civilization there are many many modern designs of telescopes we have tech one telescope mirror as you are seeing here and the optics is very very complex it is not simply having a mirror collecting some light doing some analysis right you are having really wonderful designs like the very large telescope 8.1 meter mirror of the gemini telescope you are able to see as i have told you we have radio telescopes now we have a process called interferometry and by interferometry we are able to create a larger telescope uh, radius as if it is really existing if you want to collect a large amount of radio waves the telescope should be bigger and bigger but we use the principle of interferometry to connect with all these thing and we are able to successfully uh, have an effect as if the telescope is so very large but you can see the telescopes are finite in size like the very large array telescope very large baseline array telescope in the usa you have infrared telescopes you have so many telescopes which were launched into space like iras infrared astronomy satellite chandra which takes uh, the sky in x ray wavelength then you have uuv you have ultraviolet image of the celestial objects then nasa is having spitzer space telescope then you are having ultraviolet radiation telescope it has to be done from satellites x ray astronomy these kind of different different tools of astronomy are studying different phenomena and they are pulling all of them together and they are trying to understand the giant scale structure of the universe how all these things came into being how all these things are going to be in the near future right and this is chandra's x ray nasa chandra x ray observatory then you have gamma ray astronomy india is uh, india is also a pioneer in gamma ray astronomy and they have space based gamma ray observatory they have also ground based gamma ray observatory many many interesting projects are coming online in the near future so telescopes are really wonderful phenomena there are some questions like is time travel possible is time travel really possible in science fiction it is possible recently there was a movie called avengers infinity war and end game do you remember those movies so in that movie the heroes were traveling in time either backwards or forward time travel is it possible theoretically it is possible but when we are really coming into an experimental scenario it has not been proven so far they say that there are some space based application like gps which will vouch for time travel but time travel is an entirely different concept as of now theoretically it is possible but in reality it may not be possible there are few interesting question like 
how they are going to some other star system how we can go to other galaxies now we have so much of imagination on these kind of things nasa has at least theoretically warp drive technology they have so many designs for space craft so by rotation these space craft create artificial gravity inside their place so you may know in space there will be no gravity acceleration due to gravity and these kind of space crafts they may be rotating around a common center and they may be creating artificial gravity so is it possible warp drive is it possible do we have some connecting links to other part of the universe or black holes connecting links to other universes all these things are in theoretical level only nobody has proven it and we are trying to do our level best trying to prove them but as of now it is not there now we have come to the end of our lecture the big bang theory how it all began so many questions were asked about big bang theory so big bang as per the current understanding of science happened some 13.7 billion years before and you can see for so much of time radiation was dominating maybe up to 10 power 4 years radiation was dominating then the first stars began to form you can see initially hydrogen was formed helium was formed to a very 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 less extent heavy metals like lithium carbon oxygen they were formed and as the time increased the temperature came down to the current temperature of more than slightly more than 2 kelvin you can see the temperature is the universe is expanding as time passes and it is cooling down as the time passes and after a particular point of time stars were able to form so what is big bang and 13.7 billion years ago there was nothing absolutely nothing no nothing there was not anything right so suddenly there was a big bang and everything began to expand because of the force of the big bang as time increased universe cooled down and stars were able to form galaxies were able to form and now we are at the end of this graph 13.7 billion years away from the time when big bang happened as per the current understanding of science so now matter is dominating right so there are three sets of the universe as we are aware of if the there is something called as critical density right so let me tell what uh, about critical density critical density is the density of the known universe if the critical density is equal to uh, the critical density is the density uh, if the current density is equal to critical density then the universe will be a flat universe if the current density of the universe is greater than the critical density the universe will collapse back and if the current density is less than the critical density the universe will expand forever so that is the current understanding of science All right so critical density is a constant or it's a value in physics if we are above it or below it or equal to it we will have three sets of the universe okay then what is dark matter so many questions were asked about dark matter also the galaxies in our universe seem to be achieving an impossible feat what is that impossible feat they are rotating with so great a speed okay so the gravity generated by them is not able to sustain a stable galaxy are we having stable galaxy yes we do have stable galaxy otherwise we are in for trouble stars will come and collide with us forget about meteor asteroid or meteorite comets forget about all the small things stars will come and collide with our solar system so universe galaxy is somewhat stable but 
do we have enough matter inside each galaxy to hold them together as per the current understanding of science we do not have enough matter to hold them together the same is true for galaxies in clusters we do not have enough matter visible matter to hold them together by gravity so scientists are thinking there are some matters which we cannot see which is at work so that is called as dark matter they think that we cannot detect this dark matter directly because they are weakly interacting with the electromagnetic spectrum they are weakly interacting with the visible matter around them but they are having gravity because of their enormous gravitational effect galaxies are stable groups of galaxies are stable super clusters of galaxies are stable this strange and unknown matter is known as dark matter now we are coming to some realm of fiction we are not able to explain the giant scale structure of the universe that is why we are putting forward a theory called unseen cannot be detected cannot be interacted with matter called dark matter so dark matter is seen in this picture so you are seeing a galactic cluster the blue color thing is galaxies which are behind this galaxy cluster as per einstein's general theory of relativity there will be a gravitational bending of light and you are seeing the gravitational bending of light of galaxies which is behind this star clusters and it can be only possible if this galaxy cluster is having dark matter okay can dark matter be composed of normal matter no as of now no the normal matter is made up of protons neutrons electrons as we know it we do not have even antimatter we have very very less amount of antimatter right the density of baryons is not enough to withhold the giant scale structure of the universe that is why we are going for dark matter the density of all the baryonic matter is less than 4% only right so Uh, let me go slightly faster we have some theories put forward for dark matter like macos massive compact halo objects right so that is called some kind of dark matter then you have wimps weakly interactive massive objects wimps right weakly interacting massive particle so that is some theory put forward to explain dark matter what is the ma matter content of the universe the known visible thing forms only 4.6 there is something called as dark matter there is something called as dark energy so these estimates may vary slightly now and then but you can be assured of one thing the known visible matter is less than 4 percentage but what about dark matter it forms 23% of the universe dark energy is something which forms 70 73% of the universe so you can see the stars will form 0.5 percentage neutrinos will form 0.3 percentage and other heavy element will be forming less than 0.03 percentage so what is this dark energy it is a theoretical form of energy which has been told in opposition to the gravitational force and as you know some 25 years before scientists discovered some astounding thing the expansion of the universe is not slowing down but it is rather accelerating for explaining the acceleration of the expansion of the universe scientists have taken into account something called as dark energy it accounts for most of the energy in the universe and it is causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate so now what will happen if this scenario continues if the universe is expanding far ever there was an interesting question can we control the universe can we control the earthquake earthquake you can control to a lesser amount by designing the building you cannot really control the earthquake but you can control the damage caused by earthquake okay so can we control the universe can we control a planet first can we control a solar system first can we control a group of stars first can we control a galaxy 
if we can answer this question then we can say we can control the universe when we are taking children for a study to we may not be even be able to control children if we are successful in controlling children if we are taking college students on a trip i do not want to and go further it may be difficult for some faculty to control them but anyhow what will happen if the universe is expanding forever and ever we will go into a journey into darkness there is a mysterious force known as dark energy that rules the universe it is a constant anti gravitational force so what will happen the universe will expand faster and faster matter will continue to dilate in 10 power 100 years all the things will be disintegrated all sun all stars our planetary system everything will disintegrate everything will die and it is going to happen as per some understanding of scientists in the distant future but what is big rip theory then it is called as a sudden death as the days go by the dark energy gains strength and it will accelerate the expansion of the universe even faster and faster and true trillion years from now the universe will be violently ripped up all the things will ripped up and will die a slow death there are many alternative theories to the formation the existence of universe big bang theory is not the only theory like steady state theory quasi steady state theory cyclic universe theory big bounce theory how the universe is going to end the big crunch theory if the critic density of the universe is greater than the critical density it will end in a big crunch mode there are some theories known as big freeze big latch big break you put big before something it will become a theory now we are coming to the last question which i am planning to answer what was there before the big bang this was a question asked by quite a number of people what was there before big bang now the great scientist stephen hawking has answered it like this i think the universe was spontaneously generated out of nothing according to the laws of science it has no beginning and no end this is from stephen hawking we have another astronomer lawrence m cross he was persistently asked this question what was there before the big bang for which he answered there are some questions for which we can find answers for some questions which we may not be able to find answers we should be able to know the difference and we should step away from questions which we cannot answer right now so that was an answer given by a scientist so what was there before the big bang for some questions we may not be able to answer right now we should be stepping away from those kind of questions what was there before the big bang we don't know that was a answer right so evolutionary cosmologist they have always criticized creationism as a unscientific because of its basic commitment to the doctrine of creation out of nothing yet evolutionary cosmologists they are also maintaining the same position the universe evolved itself out of nothing so i leave it to you to decide for yourself creationist at least postulate an adequate cause to produce the universe there is an infinite omnipotent omniscient omni uh, trans omni uh, omniscient transcendent self existing god personal creator god who might have created the universe or we came from nothing either we came from nothing and or behind all of our existence there may be a loving and personal god the god of creation so with this i have come to the end of my lecture i hope you had a very interesting journey now it is time for question and answer answer so never stop planning that is what i am coming to say so never stop planning so we will now take a couple of questions from the audience so over to you dinakar so 
Dinaka, you can now ask, 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 ask. Can I hear him? Yeah, but there is some trouble. Can I switch on the depressor? Mike is asking the question. Okay, one minute. Okay, you can ask questions. There is a question about twin paradox. So let me tell about that first. Twin paradox is a paradox in which one of the twins travel at the speed of light. And after 20 years, when he comes back, he will find his twin 20 years older than him. And because time comes to a stand still when something travels at the speed of light this man will be as young as he had begun 20 years before it's a paradox it has never been proven it's a paradox can it really happen Think for 20 years he is traveling whether he is traveling at the speed of light or what no he is traveling for 20 years but here the same 20 years is going for another train so to the best of my knowledge he may be also old as the same twin who is not traveling. But this is my suggestion. But scientists will say, no, 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 he will not age. OK, can you please ask some other questions? There is a question here. Uh, let me see it for myself. There is a movie called uh, Ringle of Time. Okay. So, Dinagar, hear me? Hello, hello, Gana. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Please, yeah, please. Yes, I am reading one question. Could you answer this question? Yeah. Uh, any relation between black hole and God particles? No, no, no. There is no relation between black hole and God particle. God particle is the name given to Higgs boson. Okay, they have given that name to Higgs boson because if they told that if they find Higgs boson, they can complete the standard model of particle physics. Higgs boson is a fundamental particle which gives mass to all other elemental particles. So it, Higgs boson was named like God because it was so elusive to find. Many of the scientists do not really uh, like this uh, title, God particle, but anyhow, that is the common language many people are using. No relation between black holes and God particles. Hello, Kana? Yes, Nanda. Can you yes, hear me? Can ask. Yes, I can hear it. Please go ahead. Does ancient text explain the whole universe? No, actually, uh, no ancient text, no sacred books have complete explanation about the universe. Uh, of course, each of them give their own viewpoint. The ancient texts, are they giving understanding of the universe? To the best of my knowledge, no. Why? Some 2,500 years before, they were having different notations all together, different notions all together. Cladius told me, yes, a scientist told geocentric theory. Only 500 years before, Nicholas Copernicus, a priest, he told heliocentric theory. So, no ancient textbook is giving a complete understanding of the cosmos. They are giving some, some bits and pieces of information. Okay, you can go to the next question. Uh, Why our Earth's magnetic field weakens gradually? Hello? Okay. Uh, Why our Earth's not, magnetic field weakens gradually? It is not weakening actually. If it is weakening, then we are in for real trouble. There will be switching of magnetic poles in Earth. Okay. So at that time, it seems to be 
slightly weaker. Otherwise, the Earth's magnetic field is as strong as it is before only, if I am correct. So, uh, if it is getting weaker, then all the cosmo cosmic particles which are coming from sun and other stars, they can enter into planet Earth's atmosphere. All of us will be radiated to death. It, it may not be it getting weak and as okay. Can you explain cycle of sunspots? So sunspots are being studied for nearly 400 years. It is having 11 year cycle. And we have some beautiful explanation for how sunspots are formed. So the earth, the sun is having differential rotation. It is not having same rotation speed and it is having different rotation at equator, different rotation speed at polar. So the magnetic fields of sun gets twisted and twisted as the time uh, goes by. And some part of the sun becomes cooler than other part of the sun, where the magnetic activity will be really, really very high. Okay, So those parts are visible from here as sun spots. So sunspots are essentially happening because of differential rotation of the sun and its magnetic field alignment. Yes? So now the chat box is enabled the students and faculty who are willing to ask a question, you can please ask. Okay, let me answer a few questions which uh, students have asked earlier. How to start a research career in astronomy? So starting a research career in astronomy is not an easy jo uh, job. You need really very uh, you need to be really very hard working. If you are studying BSc, I would suggest you to go for MSc physics, general physics, if you are studying BSc physics. If you are doing MSc physics, I will suggest you to go for competitive exams like GRE, TOEFL. Now, let me explain for BSc graduates first, then I will explain for MSc graduates. There are many international online programs coming in online in the next couple of years. How to join those kind of online programs? First of all, as soon as, as you join MSc physics in some reputed institutions, Please be proactive. Many, many students are not at all active. So that is really very uh, sad to notice. Please be active. Go and participate in competition. Go and participate in winter research program, summer internship program. Go and uh, do something with your field of research. There are many, many research institutions in India who are working in the field of astronomy and astrophysics. How to go there? There is an exam called Joint Entrance Screening Test. There is an exam called Joint Entrance Screening Test. So please write that Joint Entrance Screening Test. After you write that test, with that score, you have to go for the reputed astronomical research institutions in there will be a tough process again there. You have to overcome that. Then you may be able to join for PhD program in Indian University through those kind of research institutions. This is one way. There's the second way. 
if you are a bsc graduate you go for msc then you prefer for tofu you prefer for you prefer for various other things like gre then you have to apply to some foreign university for master of science degree you're not directly going to apply for psc you are going to apply for master's program in astronomy and astrophysics with full funding you can target to germany you can learn extra language if you want to go to germany you have to learn german language so it is possible many talented students are listening to this lecture i am sure that you will be able to do that what about msc students msc students they have two options again try to just join in indian research organizations uh you can hello gana yes hello dr gana can you hear me yeah are you able to hear me yeah i can hear you uh do one thing uh so the uh, feedback form links are uh, posted in the chat box and also in youtube link okay okay uh, people has to fill it up as early as possible uh, then could you connect uh, dr jabrai sir you are the host right yeah okay i am the host now yeah i gave it to you okay sari is already co host okay uh, shall i finish that answering that question can i you can finish it now uh, so it is a time to say thanks about thanks okay wait a minute uh, just give me two more minutes okay okay, okay. Uh, so for msc students writing just is a way to uh, go for a research program or you have to learn some languages like german and you can apply for masters program in germany you have to write some qualifying exam like gre and tofl so this is how you go for astronomy research program so many interesting things are coming so many interesting things are coming so do not worry you have ample opportunity if you work hard you can really go to great heights in the field of astronomy and astrophysics even from our department one student has gone to germany university of bonn for doing astronomy research two students are in taiwan one student is in national donghua university another student is in national shinghua university so people are there they have worked hard they have done all these uh, preliminary steps they have gone to various programs so i really thank the pg and research department of hopes college for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, so over to dinakar uh, thank you very much uh, dr kanna for the wonderful talk really thought provoking it made the people to travel into the universe and uh, see everything and really wonderful and thank dr kannanna for his presentation and all the participants can send the feedback and get the ecity apart from that uh, you can you can send your questions to dr kanna also by mail and he is ready to answer at any time uh, thank you very much uh, we close this this uh, session right now thank you yes sir. Just make a stop.